Hey guys. <clears throat> All right. So, second video. <clears throat> so I forgot to say something in yesterday, and I forgot to say something in the first video. I've been off pop for this is ten days, so we get a half today. And you know what? I don't miss it, and I feel really good. Starting to feel better, and that says something. So think about it before you drink those sodas and that pop. God bless you both. Because I've been on, uh, this is 10 days and I'm starting to feel better. So. All right. So this video is the one that's, the section that's buried inside the one that we just did. And again, it's from Morning Chores. And this one's called Before You Start Beekeeping, Legal Cost, Time Commitment, and Bee Anatomy in a Nutshell. So let's just jump right in here and get going. If you're not already familiar with honeybees, you may not be aware of the tremendous benefit they are to our planet. Of course, bees produce the sweet honey that we love to add to a hot cup of tea, but they're also integral to the process of growing many fruits, flowers, and veg vegetables. They are hardworking pollinators, and without them, plant and flower production would suffer. The American Beekeeping Federation stupid ads, <clears throat> states, honeybees contribute nearly $20 billion to the value of U.S. crop production. This contribution made by managed honeybees comes in the form of increased yields and superior quality crops for growers and American consumers. A healthy beekeeping industry is invaluable to a healthy U.S. agricultural economy. And that was from the American Beekeeping Federation. <clears throat> beekeeping is helpful for, helpful for many industries, but it's also greatly beneficial to backyard gardeners and homesteaders. If you've wondered about getting your own hive but weren't sure where to start, check out our handy beginner's guide. <clears throat> All about honeybees, is beekeeping right for you? Can you keep bees? The first question you may ask yourself is if beekeeping is right for you. Here are some points that you might want to consider before bringing home your first bee colony. Zoning and legal re restrictions. <coughs> Sorry. Still have issues in my sinuses, guys. Okay. <clears throat> Where you live will have a significant impact on whether or not you can legally keep bees. There are also different regulations for different areas, so you'll first want to check with your local municipality. You may also want to consider your neighbors. Some neighbors may be intimidated by your bees. Not going to be a, much of a problem with us considering uh, us up on the property, so. <clears throat> Some. Okay. Communicating with your neighbors about the usefulness of bees would be a step in the right direction. The more they understand what you're doing, the less concerning it will probably be to them. Though it may be surprising, living in an urban area does not necessarily mean that you can't keep bees. Several major cities now welcome bees, including Los Angeles and New York City. Again, the most important thing to do is check the city ordinances and to make sure you're legal. Start, excuse me. Startup cost and cost of keeping bees. As with most homesteading projects, the cost can vary widely. You can use the most expensive equipment or you can buy used clothing and equipment to get started. While it is possible to build your own hives and catch a wild swarm, my nose is just sorry, this would be a difficult way to begin. For this reason, we will be giving you a rough idea of startup equipment and operating equipment. Startup cost, a smoker, a hive with frames and foundation, bees with a queen, protective clothing, Hive tool, equipment for harvesting and storing honey, honey jars, uncapping tool, buckets, honey strainer, bee brush, extractor you need for large quantities of honey, operating equipment, mite control, feed in winter and dearth, D-E-A-R-T-H, ranges greatly based on type and quantity, hives for expansion, 
There are plenty of additional ancillary items that, you, that might be useful to you, but you have, you'll have a better idea of which ones are, are necessary to you once you dive deeper into beekeeping. Blech. What does your time commitment look like? Another thing you'll want to take into consideration is whether or not you have time to care for your bees. There are going to be a large portions of the year when the bees require very little from you. In fact, it's better to let them alone when your interference isn't necessary. Still, there are times you, when you will need to be involved. And of course, there is time involved harvesting the delicious honey. Your first year is going to take more time as you set up a home for your bees and prepare for their arrival. Many people suggest that caring for honeybees will take 15 to 30 hours a year per hive. However, this does not include research that you may put, into, put in to be a better beekeeper. It also doesn't include the time you will enjoy sitting and watching your happy little workers. I know my family and I have spent a great deal of time watching the bees fly in and out of their boxes. It gives you the most amazing feeling knowing that they're healthy and thriving. Many people who are interested in bees genuinely enjoy the time spent with them and feel very fulfilled when they see their hives grow and produce honey. Common Honeybee Stock Before you can purchase your first set of bees, you'll need to know what kinds of bees are available. Now some of this will be a little bit uh, familiar because of the pin that I, or the video I put out yesterday. But it also has a little bit more in-depth information, so. This will also help you determine which bees will do best in your area. It should be noted that there are not really any pure bee species, as your bees are going to breed with other bees in the area. This will create a new hybrid of bee species. The Italian bee. Number one, the Italian bee. The Italian bee is the most common race of honey stock bee. These bee species were brought from Italy to the U.S. in 1859. This type of bee is popular because they are hardy producers and have prolific brood cycles. They also have, gentle, they also have a gentle nature and are less likely to swarm than other bee stock. Number two, the Russian bee. The Russian bee was brought over to the U.S. in 1997. U.S. bees were suffering from something called colony collapse, and a significant problem that caused some beekeepers to lose as many as 30 to 90 percent of their hives. In response, the USDA introduced the Russian bee because they were known for withstanding parasites. Parasites were known to be one of the factors related to colony collapse, and they hoped this stock would help save the U.S. bees. These bees are a bit more aggressive than the Italian bee. They're also hard to come by in the U.S. Number three, the carn... The Carniolan bee, C-A-R-N-I-O-L-A-N. The Carniolan bee is another very popular type of honeybee. These bees are known for being docile, and they are heavy spring producers. They also have one of the longest tongue species. They also have one of the longest tongues of the bee species, making it easier for them to pollinate crops like clover. This bee stock is more tolerant of colder climates, and they do well with overwintering. One of the less appealing things about these bees is they are more likely to swarm than other bee stock. Number four, the Buckfast bee. This bee stock was originally hybridized in Buckfast Abbey, located in the UK. It's very popular for places that have similar climates to the British Isles. They're known for having strong resistance to some parasites, and they're also known for being good foragers. Another perk is that they're unlikely to swarm. This bee stock is not common in the U.S., and they do suffer from inbreeding, which has weakened their resilience against pests in some cases. Additionally, they are more aggressive than the Carnolian or the Italian bee. Number five, the Caucasian. The Caucasian bee was once very popular in the U.S., However, it has lost popularity over time because they are not strong honey producers. For those who are looking for a bee stock primarily for pollination, these bees are still a good choice. They have very long tongues, which makes it easy for them, easier for them to pollinate flowers with greater depth. The German bee, number six, the German bee. The German bee is derived from the European dark bee, which originated in northern Eurasia. This bee stock was once popular because they are able to winter better than many other strains of bees, and they are great at defending their colony. 
Their dark color is distinct and they are larger than many other honeybees. Unfortunately, these bee stock is susceptible to brood diseases known as American and European fowl brood. For this reason, they're not a very good choice for first time beekeepers. <clears throat> Give me a second. All right, the queen, the drones, and the workers. Every honeybee colony is broken into three types of bees, a queen, the drones, and the workers. Each member of the colony is vital, but they each provide a very different role. Number one, queen bees. The queen is the single most important member of a bee colony. This is because they are the only member who is able to lay fertilized eggs. After a queen bee is born, she will begin her mating flights. During these flights, she will mate with approximately 10 to 20 different drones. Later, the queen bee will start laying eggs. Amazingly, she is capable of producing up to 2,000 eggs in a single day. Though it may be contrary to her name, the queen bee is not in charge of the hive. In fact, it's the worker bees who really drive the decisions. They are the ones who decide when to raise a new queen or when to kill an existing one. Number two, worker bees. In a honeybee colony, worker bees are all female. Young worker bees do everything from caring for the queen and young larvae to producing wax to building structures. Once the worker bee ages, they are likely to graduate to outside chores. During this time, they will take their first flight. Soon after, they will begin foraging to collect nectar, pollen, and water. Honeybee foragers are susceptible to many outside dangers like predators, storms, and diseases. These risks are greatly, re greatly reduce their life expectancy, and many of them will die 30 days after they begin foraging. During the winter, when bees huddle together to stay warm, they are capable of living for six months or more. Number three, the drone. Drone bees are the only males in a colony. Unlike female worker bees, they do not have a stinger. These male bees are only present for a few months a year. They are distinct from the female bees because their eyes are much larger. <coughs> <sighs> their job is to leave the hive and locate queen bees to mate with. They are responsible for spreading the genes of their colony to other queens. Once they have mated with a queen, their life cycle ends. The anatomy of a bee. Bees are insects and they share five common characteristics with other insects. Number one, an exoskeleton. Number two, Three main body parts, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Number three, a pair of antennae. Number four, three pairs of legs. Number five, two pairs of wings. The head of a honeybee contains eyes, antenna, mandibles, and a brain. The thorax holds the legs and the wings. Lastly, the abdomen contains a stinger, wax glands, and reproductive organs. The exoskeleton of the honeybee is mostly covered in a layer of hair that helps regulate temperature and collect pollen. Additionally, the honeybee has something called a proboscis or proboscis, proboscis, p r o b o s c i s, which is another name for their tongue. The proboscis helps bees reach the center of a flower and it can also be used for grooming. A female honeybee also has something called a pollen basket. As the worker bee gathers pollen, she stores it for later. Another name for this apparatus is called the corbicula. C-O-R-B-I-C-U-L-A. The corbicula is located in the, on the tibia of the hind legs. When a bee visits a flower, she grooms herself and brushes the pollen she has collected into her pollen basket. She often mixes a little nectar into the pollen to make it stick together. The hairs in her pollen basket keep everything in place. Alright, hang on guys. Yeah. My sinuses. Beekeeping for all. Beekeeping is a time-honored practice enjoyed by many commercial businesses and enthusiasts, enthusiasts alike. When deciding if beekeeping is a good fit for you, consider your purpose for having bees. Do you want your own raw honey and beeswax? 
Would you want amazing pollinators in your garden? Or do you want to benefit the environment? Sorry, my nose is just... Maybe all of the above. Perhaps you've always loved bees and want to take part in the life of these fascinating insects. Whatever your reason, weigh out the costs and the benefits and decide if you'd like to try your hand at beekeeping. Beekeeping may have trials, but many beekeepers agree that the honeybees give back more than they take. And that was the inside information that was on the one we just did a few minutes ago. And that was before you start beekeeping, legal costs, time commitment, and bee anatomy in a nutshell. And I hope you guys got some good information out of that. It wasn't as long of a video as I thought it was going to be. And I will get this uploaded and maybe have time to do one or two more. So I will see you guys on the next video. Bye, guys.